My wife and I homeschooled our kids when they were younger, and anytime they'd meet somebody who wasn't homeschooled, three questions would always come up. Number one, can you do school in your pajamas? Number two, can you eat anytime you want? Number three, do you have any friends? Well, it's kind of the same thing with working from home. So have I taken video calls in pajama pants? Probably have. Uh, does anybody know that? No, not unless uh, I tell them like I'm telling them right now. Uh, when I first started working from home 20 years ago, I would like iron a shirt every day and put on slacks and try and simulate a going to the office sort of vibe. There isn't any need for that. Part of the advantage of working from home is you're in your home and you can dress a little more comfortably like you're in your home. Now, you're probably going to be doing video calls. So, you know, take that into account and dress in a way that that's uh, kind of works with that. But uh, you don't need to worry about trying to look fancy. That's just not really a thing. Um, on the topic of pajamas, let's think about some other things in the home like pets and children. Now, um, pets, that's kind of up to you. If you have pets that need attention, fine. Um, but if you have like a cat or a dog that gets in the shot when you're in a video call, that's okay. You know, you are in a home and there are pets in homes. And you shouldn't think of that as like an unprofessional thing. Um, when it comes to uh, kids, now my first experiment was in 1995 with working from home and it didn't go well. We had a toddler, uh, 18 month old boy or oldest, and it just, he thought it was playtime with daddy all the time. Bad, bad thing. Tried again uh, the next time I think it was in 2000 and he was a little bit bigger and the middle daughter had been born and the youngest was a toddler then. And really we made it work. Uh, it took some practice, you know, but I guess I just want to encourage you, your kids can learn that you are in a workplace and it is a work time. Uh, now, if they're below a certain age, they're going to need care, right? Uh, like if you are a single mom who cares for children and they're home from daycare or school or whatever, and, and you're thinking you're going to work, you can't like also do the, the caretaking of a full-time parent uh, at the same time as you're doing your job, right? So don't, don't put that on yourself, but... Um, if there is somebody in the home caring for the children while you're working from home, they'll learn and, and you'll get there. It could be a little rough at first, but it, it does work. Um, then there's the whole work from home problem of, of boundaries. You know, maybe you can work the whole day in your jammy pants. And believe me, that's a huge win. Um, but at some point you should stop working. Now, to some degree, this is just a problem with just the way knowledge work works these days. There's email all the time and there's Slack all the time and you're kind of expected to be on all the time. But that's an especially pernicious trap in the work at home life. Like you have to have a time when you're in the office working and then you have a time when you're not. Uh, and that transition is usually in the evening. And You go and you make dinner and you be with your family or whoever it is that's in your house. Uh, or even if, if you live alone, you know, you have some time for yourself. So make sure you set those boundaries. Now, when it comes to food, being in the office, there's usually some kind of cadence, right? You're, there's lunchtime and everybody goes to lunch. Maybe there's a cafeteria in the building or everybody goes out and uh, that's sort of the reminder. Okay, stop working. Go do that now. Uh, you may have to impose that discipline on yourself to make a time to eat, to go and prepare food and and don't work for a little bit and eat the food and do some other thing. So, you know, give yourself a lunchtime. You might have to block it off in your calendar. Uh, that's certainly the case for me. My team is distributed globally and the company is distributed globally, all kinds of different time zones. People are going to schedule meetings over lunch. They don't necessarily care or they're doing their best, you know, so you may have to defend that time in your calendar, but definitely do it. Um, the other question that comes up is how do I keep from eating? Well, um, that's to me, when I'm in the office, I work for a Silicon Valley company. And when I'm in the office, there's, you know, healthy snacks and there's plenty of junk food in the snack area. So the temptation at the office is way bigger for me than at home. Um, but in general, you know, as Jocko says, discipline equals freedom. So you may have to impose some discipline on yourself to not eat all the time. Uh, whatever it is, make sure you get that balance. Make some meal time, but don't make all the time meal time. Now, if you're going from a lifestyle of working exclusively in the office and talking to people in the office to a full-time work from home lifestyle, it really is going to feel different. And the way you relate to people is different. So it's always great to be in the room together with people, uh, but maybe now you can't. And we kind of have to talk about what, how, how you have to modify your interactions to adapt to that. First of all is video calls. Now turn on your video. 
Um, I have some remote coworkers who just don't like to have their video on. And my advice is always turn it on. Now, maybe you don't like the way you look on video. Well, if you go to the office, people see your face every day and they seem to like you well enough, probably. So it's probably just you and you should turn your video on so people can see your face. That's really important. There are so many nonverbal cues in conversation that other people need to be able to pick up, pick up on. They need to be able to see your face to do that. And for meetings of more than two people, um, most video conferencing software will have like a gallery mode, or I call it Brady Bunch mode, where there's a little square and you can see everybody's face. Use that for big meetings so you can see everybody's face. Uh, there's just a lot to pick up on. There might be people like who start to talk and then stop and you'll see them, but you can't hear them. Uh, and if your video is on, you're depriving people of that signal. So turn your video on. Now, if you want to look nice on video, that's fine. Lighting counts for a lot. If you can face an open window, that's the easiest and best option. It's it's nice, usually bright, uniform light of a color that most webcams handle well. Uh, so you'll look your best doing that. If you don't have a window you can face or if that's too much light for you, I personally don't like that. Um, any kind of light that's basically at your eye level uh, that is that is fairly uniform and, and illuminating your face is your best bet. If you've got like overhead recessed cam lighting, that's very typical in a lot of houses. Um, that's that's not the best, right? So if you don't like the way you look on video, that might be why. But don't get too wrapped around the axle about that. Uh, you know, if you can face an open window, do it. Otherwise, as long as people can see your face, that's great. Also, some kind of headset, like I have here on my desk, some uh, regular Apple uh Earbuds. I always want to say AirPods. They're not AirPods. They're earbuds. I have some earbuds and I use those on the phone. It helps reduce echo. So good idea to, to do that. If you're leading a, a video meeting and you're not used to doing that, it's slightly different. Now, you have the same responsibility leading a video meeting uh, to manage airtime as you would in the room. And hopefully this is a thing that you're attentive to. You have to make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak and that the noisy people or the people who just like to be heard more aren't the ones dominating the microphone all the time. This is why that gallery mode and everybody having their video on is so important because as a leader, you can look for who looks like they might be trying to talk, but then censoring themselves. You'll see it in their face. Uh, just make sure they get the mic. Tell other people to be quiet and call on them. Say, hey, we want to hear what you have to say because we like you and we value you. Uh, that's really, really important. It's different on a video call than doing it on the room. But again, if you're leading the call, no excuses. Airtime is your responsibility to manage. Uh, Slack. Okay, so I'm just going to say Slack. Maybe you use some other kind of messaging, whatever. But let's just assume it's Slack because it is for most businesses these days. If you're going from office only to remote only, you might be communicating in writing more. Um, most offices, most knowledge workers, certainly most tech companies, you're probably slacking all the time anyway. But hey, maybe you find yourself slacking more now. Um, a few pointers. Number one, emotionally charged topics are harder to do in text of any kind, email or Slack. So when you see something becoming difficult and these things happen, you know, um, get out of Slack, get on a video call or voice chat, a phone call, whatever it is. Just stop the text and talk in real time as quickly as you can uh, if things get heated. Also, emojis and GIFs. Now, if you think emojis and GIFs are childish or something that those millennials do or something like that, stop thinking that. There's a valid linguistic purpose that these things serve, in particular emojis. So when you're speaking, if you can speak the language fluently that, that you're speaking to people, there's all kinds of little things that you do to kind of cushion disagreement and let the other person or people know uh, hey, I'm saying something that uh, could be off-putting, but I don't want it to be off-putting. Uh, people use the word like uh, this way, the word well. If you begin a sentence with well, what I mean to say is that's like a way of, of kind of cushioning yourself. You don't think about this. You just do it as a speaker. You don't do those as much in writing. And Slack is this weird thing that's like halfway conversation, halfway writing. Emojis fill that role. So emojis are a way of saying, uh, hey, I, I'm saying something that I know is going to make you sad, and I'm sorry about that. So I'll put a little frowny face at the end or a little cry face at the end of that. Or uh, I'm kidding with you when I say this. So I'll put a little troll face on the end of it. Stuff like that. Um, the linguistic topic, by the way, if you want to Google this, it's called pragmatics. Um, and that's this whole field of linguistics and this kind of speech that we do when we're talking. Uh, that's, that's just this elaborate system of being nice to people. And emojis are like Slack 
pragmatics. So don't dismiss them. Get good at them. They matter a lot. Um, otherwise, you know, asynchronous chat really is great as a as a, a remote collaboration tool. You can carry on a few conversations at the same time, as long as they're not too heavyweight that you couldn't do if you were speaking. And sometimes you can get a few non-critical messages that aren't, aren't time critical, you know, that can sit there for a while, respond to them later when you can, all kinds of things that are great about that. When it comes to notifications for Slack and email and just messaging systems in general, your mileage may vary. Everybody's got an opinion on whether to have those happen. Personally, I have email notifications off and Slack notifications on because I want to know when people are messaging me. That's really the equivalent of going and tapping someone on the shoulder. So use it responsibly, right? If you're tapping someone on the shoulder, you're, you're interrupting them and you have to want to interrupt them. Um, but um, that's my advice is notifications on for messaging if it's a thing you can deal with. So those are the three big questions. Can you work in your pajamas? Yes. Can you eat whatever you want? Yes. Do you have friends or can you get along with your coworkers? Yes, you can. And if you're new to working from home, it can seem a little scary and there could be some things that are logistically difficult, but it works really well for a lot of people. I think it'll work well for you too, for however long we're doing this. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Thanks.